right, Uncle Sam FM here, and this is episode 14 of the Iron Manager series. And this is kind of a special episode because Tony Stark has been named as the MLS All-Star Game Manager. He will be leading the MLS All-Stars into the All-Star Game. And if you're not familiar with the MLS All-Star Game, it's a um, it's kind of an American tradition. Um, I, I'm, I guess I can't really pretend to be a historian of, of the All-Star Game concept, but I, probably it started with baseball. When, um, when, ba- when ba- baseball first, <clears throat> uh, when American baseball kind of first developed, there were two leagues. You had the American League and the National League, and the, they did not play games against each other. And so if you, if you were a fan of, of an American League team, you never got to see players from the National League. And so they came up with this concept of, hey, let's, let's have all the best players of the two different leagues play each other. And it was unique. It was dynamic. And a lot of people were you know, interested in seeing that, right? They were interested in seeing the best players from the other league. But then also you just had this collection of all of the best players uh, at the time in the world. And so it was, um, you know, it was a fascinating concept. It's probably kind of outgrown itself as now there's most teams, most leagues have what you call interleague play where they, you, their, your team plays all of the other teams. So you see all the players, all the best players of the league. You also have TV, you have television, which, uh, and now we have the internet. So you can see all of that and, it's also kind of with Major League Soccer. It's also kind of silly because obviously MLS doesn't have the, all the best players in the world, so it's it's not as unique. And what kind of started happening happening with MLS, and they've played with the MLS All Star Game format since it really began. I can remember in the late '90s they did a version of the MLS All Star Game where. Uh, it started at MLS East versus the MLS West. So you had the uh, Eastern Conference All-Stars against the Western Conference All-Stars. Um, and, but you know, people were not as interested in that as they were at All-Star Games from other leagues. So they, tried, they started having all the best American players versus the players, um, the international players. And that really, they, I think they did that one year. And it was really kind of lopsided. The American team won. I'm wanting to say it was like six or seven to to nothing or to one, but so that really didn't work. So they went back to the East versus West. Uh, early 2000s, they actually played the um, the U.S. national team, and that that was not the full U.S. national team. But I, I do remember actually though Landon Donovan played with that MLS with the U.S. national team and uh, Precky, Demarcus Beasley. I can remember that game. Uh, I believe the MLS All Star team won three to two. And then one year they brought in Chivas Guadalajara to play against the MLS All Stars. Uh, and then they went back to the East versus West for a couple of years, I think. And for the last. 15 years I guess going back to mid 2000s maybe 2006 2005 they started bringing in um, some of the most popular clubs from Europe so I remember the first one was against Fulham and they beat Fulham four to one and so they thought hey maybe we could be more you know we'd be uh, uh, you know obviously Fulham is not Real Madrid or, or Manchester United so they wanted to try and start bringing in some of the better European teams seeing how the MLS could do so they brought in Chelsea I remember that was the second team they played and they won one to zero then they brought in like West Ham Celtic and they were winning every year Uh, they played Everton and I think they went to uh, overtime and to penalties against Everton and I don't remember who won the shootout but then they brought in Manchester United a couple years, and yeah, Manchester United absolutely ran the MLS All Stars off the field. But they still they brought they've been somewhat successful. It's been a pretty 
some of the matches have been pretty even. And you, you take out those Manchester United results. They, they beat Chelsea again, I remember. They, um, they beat Pep Guardiola when he was with Bayern Munich. Uh, they beat Tottenham. Um, they have, I think they lost to Arsenal, but it was a good game. And, but again, the, the novelty of that has kind of started to wear off. And so what they were going to do this year was play against the Liga MX All-Stars. And what you're starting to see right now is a lot of cooperation between the MLS and Liga MX. They want to, I think they're trying to, through competition, through competing against each other, improve the quality of both leagues. Right now, MLS is, is getting better. They're probably still not at the level of Liga MX. The reality is Liga MX, Mexico just develops um, better players uh, more better players. Their player pool is deeper, I guess you could say. So, because of that, Liga MLX, Liga MX, probably a step ahead of MLS, but they still see the value in competing with MLS, especially now since MLS is bringing in some big name designated players. And so they were gonna, ha that was gonna be the All Star game this year. But obviously, with what's going on with the uh, virus they've decided to cancel that and so that was really also kind of why i decided to do this episode is uh we are going to play the 2020 mls all-star game now the game uh, F, uh, si did not know far enough and ahead of time that liga mx was going to send an all-star team and so i i will be the MLS All Stars will be playing against um, who are they playing? Sporting, <coughs> Sporting from Portugal, and my squad for some reason I only have eighteen players. I don't know why that is. There's supposed to be way more than that, but it's um, my team is decent, not great. Uh, we'll go see if there's got to be a way to look at the team. Yeah, here we go. Um. I mean, there's some decent players. I have one player from my from uh, from Nashville's on the team, Walker Zimmerman. So he, you know, he's he's a good player. Um, looking at the rest of the team, it's not great. My goalkeeper is Andre Blake, who's okay, but there's a lot better goalkeepers than him in the league. Just, Gonzalo Martinez is okay. Uh, I do have Joseph Martinez from Atlanta United. He is one of the better attackers in the league right now um we'll look at him real quick so he's you know if if, if i win he is probably going to have to contribute he'll score my goals he also looks angry in that picture just look how mad he looks hopefully he carries that anger to uh to sporting uh, ezekiel barco is okay he's you know another Atlanta united uh attacker so um but then i, I have a very shallow bench i don't even i don't have I don't have a, a right back at all, so I'm having to start Ali Adnan on the right, and uh, he's an Iraqi player with Vancouver, uh, formerly with Atlanta. So um, that's my situation. Uh, it's not great. Sporting, uh, I don't know anything about sporting, to be honest with you. They, well, I don't have even have any scouts reports on them. I, I don't recognize many of these names. I do know Pedro Mendez actually. He's a, yeah, he's like a youngster, supposed to be pretty good. So uh, anyway, let's just dive in so we can play the 2020 MLS All Star Game. Since it will not be happening in real life, we are going to do it and see how it would go. So I just use my tactic. The, my uh, I run a sort of a a four three three. Figured why why get cute. I'm, I wasn't gonna spend a bunch of time figuring this game out. So they seem to be controlling possession, but we got the first shot, and then we had a corner there, and we give the ball away. <clears throat> yeah, personally, I'm kind of I don't I think. All-Star games are sort of a waste. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool to bring these guys together, but if I'm a manager of a team... Oh, we have a goal. Kinda. <laughs> That's his name. I have no idea if that... I cannot be how you pronounce it. It's gonna be Kinda or something. 
Uh, he just scored off an assist from Latif Blessing. Yeah, Latif, nice drop to kind of in space, and he drills it. So, yeah, if I'm a manager, I don't want any of my players in this game. I mean, if they get hurt kicking the ball around in an all-star game, that just seems ridiculous to me. I started Zimmerman, but I'm probably going to pull him at halftime. I'll run everybody else ragged. Teef here attacks the dribble, lays it out for Martinez, who lays it to Aliadnan. Across the Barco, shot is deflected out. Sporting trying to put something together here. Is it to Fernandez who buys a corner. And Martinez has it on the counter. Here we go. Martinez attacks, lays it in, can't find his man. Gonzalo Martinez with the shot into the keeper's hands. All right. A little over half hour in, Ednan cuts inside and puts a nice cross in. Martinez, Joseph, heads it in. As I said, we probably need a goal from him. Adnan here, he's, he, well, I guess this is the advantage of him being a left back playing right back as he cuts in, gets that cross there to Martinez, who knows what to do with it. We're up 2-0. All right, up to Barco now, who holds it up, lays it back for Martinez, who crosses to Gonzalo Martinez, and we're up 3-0. We are running Sporting off the field. Martinez there just cut right between two defenders. Gives it to his fellow Martinez. Sporting going to try and get something before the half here. Lays it through to Spooner, but Blake can't pull it in at first. All right, so I only made one sub. I did pull off Walker Zimmerman. Make sure he uh, does not get hurt today. I brought in Aaron Long. I guess I should be. He's my only center back, <clears throat> my only other defender on the, uh, on the bench, so I guess I better hope he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> but... I mean, if he does get hurt, I'll just throw a... I think I've got a, a defensive midfielder I can put back there, but... I mean, I want to win this game, but I really don't care. Barco takes it off the defender's feet and then puts it in the net. We're up 4-0. We are coasting. At this point, we're trying to set the record for the biggest win for the MLS All-Stars. I need to go back and look and see what that was. I think the win against Fulham, the first one, was a 4-1 to one win. And here Martinez wins it. And we're attacking again. His shot is deflected. So I've brought in Moro, I'm bringing in Moro Minotes. Minotes from Houston. And corner from by Sporting. It comes for nothing, but we get a counter here. Minotas, his first touch, I probably... Teeth with the foul. And Martinez wins that. We have a counter. Minotas. Oh, nice through ball to Barco, who puts it away, and we are up five to nothing. I don't know what the la what last year's score was in this in the MLS All-Star game. But this I think would be the biggest win for the All-Stars. And we've got the ball here, building up a little bit, kinda. Zala Martinez out to Adnan, who has a yellow. Zala drops it to Madron, who I think, I, well, no, I've got him coming out. Long puts it up to K. His cross is deflected out for a corner. Ooh, I had, had a shot there while I was making that sub, but... It, all right, so 79th minute here. 
We're kind of just seeing things out. Brought Blake off for Daniel Schmidt, who I don't even know who is. And there's Minotas into the area now. Oh, I thought, I thought for a second that was in. But his shot rattles off. All right, and looks like this will probably be the final moments, although there is time here for one team to get a goal. I'd say this was a pretty thoroughly dominating performance, even if we give up, even if Sporting gets a consolation here. We're going to win this thing comfortably. And yeah, there we go to Adnan. Morris kind of shot is wide. And we're now down to the last oh, 30 seconds of stoppage. And Aronson wins, drops it to Enbiom. Morris, who Adnan gave up on that. I think he could have got there. All right, that's it. End of the match. Five to nothing. What a dominant performance. I mean, just look at their stats. <clears throat> 21 to 3. Uh, only 59% possession, but you know, you can't expect much more than that. They there's no way they had any sort of tactical familiarity. But uh, so we had a you know just a big just a dominant win. And I, I'm pretty sure I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure that is that would be the biggest win in MLS All-Star game history. So we'll take it. Alright, so um <clears throat> Big win for the All-Stars, but let's look. Let's end the episode looking at how the team is done. So I said that I needed to win all three of those games after that LFC match. If I want to have any chance of climbing back into the Western Conference race, to the race for the first place. And we did. We won all three of those. I went to Colorado, got a 2-0 win. Goals from Baji, Daniel Rios. Uh, Daniel Rios' goal in the stoppage kind of put it away. Uh, then we played a friendly against Montpelier uh, and got a nice win there. Then we went to the LA Galaxy and got a, a, goal, a one nothing win, all three points uh, on a goal from Conrad De La Fuente. And then we went up the coast to Portland, grinded out a one nothing win on a goal from Academy signing uh, Shane James. So... Got all the points there. That was good. Now we're moving into the friendly period of the season. Uh, August is mostly for friendlies against the European teams. And started with a draw against Everton. Um, on De La Fuente scores in the 57th minute. And we were, we were literally seconds away from getting the win. And then uh, Tosin scores in the 92nd minute. So we settled for a draw. Um... This week, we got Leverkusen, Torino, Lazio, uh, PAOK, and then Stuttgart. Obviously, we I, I, I scheduled some of the biggest teams I could right now. I guess my, my rep isn't high enough to play like the Real Madrid's and the Barcelona's, but we'll take it we can get and see how that goes. And then we head into the final stretch, the last seven games of MLS play. If I'm going to win the Western Conference... Start off with a six-pointer against LAFC. I'm I'm going to have to probably get a result there. We'll look real quick at the table to see where we're at, and we're level on points. But LAFC has five matches and or four matches in hand, so theoretically they could be 12 points ahead. So I need I need to I'm going to need to win that this that first game back because if I can get that. Then that cuts that maximum difference to nine. And because I have played four matches that they've not, uh, they're, they're going to have to be dealing with fixture congestion. And so hopefully that can cause them to drop enough points here and there for to allow me to climb back in. It's unlikely. All right? it, I, it's hard to imagine them having that big of a free fall. They are probably the best team in MLS. But, um, you know, that, that, that's anything can happen, I guess. We, we need to win uh, just in case, right? If, if they do struggle and we don't win our matches, then we're not going to be there. So, and obviously San Jose is in the mix, right? The Earthquakes are, they're five back from LAFC um, and us, but they do have three games in hand on us. So that could easily put them ahead of us if they were to, 
to uh, get maximum points from the, you know they so they could theoretically be at 56 um, so work to be done we want to we would like to finish as high as we can it that helps with <clears throat> um, home getting home advantage which I've we, we're be, we're a better team at home um, and so we would like to be at, at home as much as possible for example if we finish second and third or third then obviously the first match in the playoffs we'll have at home but then that semifinal if I finish third that means I'll probably have to be going to San Jose in the semifinal but if I finish second then I would be hosting the earthquake so it it, it is somewhat important um, looking ahead um, next live com. Hmm, I don't know. I don't want to do a live com against LAFC <laughs> as bad as the last one went, but we'll. I'll pencil it in there. It, it might be a little later in the in the season. I you know when I get going, sometimes I I don't want to stop to record an episode. So so we'll see. But that was a special MLS All Star episode of the Iron Manager series. This is Uncle Sam FM signing off. I'll see you next time.